أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد نصركم الله في مواطن كثيرة ويوم حنين إذ أعجبتكم كثرتكم فلم تغن عنكم شيئا وضاقت عليكم الأرض بما رحبت ثم وليتم مدبرين صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين لقد نصركم الله في مواطن كثيرة ويوم حنين For sure Allah has blessed you with his help in many a battlefield and on the day of حنين إذ أعجبتكم كثرتكم when you were proud and doing عجب at your great number فلم تغني عنكم شيئا then it did not help you one bit with anything وضاقت عليكم الأرض بما رحبت and the earth ضاقت عليكم it became uh, it became tight for you بما رحبت despite all its vastness ثم وليتم مدبرين and you then you turn back on your heels so we talked about this yesterday that the beginning of the battle of Hunayn the Khawazin Hawazin, they attacked the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslims so fiercely and so abruptly that uh, Muslims except for a very small number the Prophet Sallallahu and his close Sahaba they started to run away and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abbas Sallallahu he called out after the Muslims who were running and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muslims strength again ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Then Allah sent down His tranquility عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So there was two kinds of tranquility tranquility or the first meaning here عَلَى رَسُولِهِ means upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba that were around him Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave such an strength to their heart that they became even more firm and steadfast وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and the general mu'mineen who were running away Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala calmed and soothed their, soothed their hearts so they found their strength and courage again and started to come back and attack the kuffar وَأَنزَلَ جُنُودَ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا at the same time what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down armies لَمْ تَرَوْهَا that general people could not see of course special people some of them when they have mentioned that we saw something like that this, is, this does not negate that but the general people they could not see it it refers to the angels so in Hunayn, the angels did not fight alongside Muslims, but their job was only to strengthen and uh, soothe the hearts of believers. وَعَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished the people who had done kufr. وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِينَ And this is the recompense of the kuffar, the disbelievers. So what was this jaza? There's two kinds of rewards or returns. The first was the worldly punishment, which they got right away that as Muslims attacked, their leader ran away. Malik bin Auf, radiallahu anhu, who became a sahabi later, he ran away and took refuge in Taif. So if you think, if you look at the map, and Hazrat has mentioned here as well, that Hunayn is basically roughly 10 miles northeast of Makkah. There's a place called Ja'lana, which is famous, and there is that, that well there where the Prophet ﷺ drank from and the Muslims drank from on their way back from Hunayn. So they are very close by. Ja'lana Hunayn and Ja'lana is that place where the Prophet ﷺ, after returning from this battle he put on the ihram and did Umrah first so he ran away all the way from there all the way to Taif which is pretty far away and took refuge in the strong castle of the Kuffar in Taif of Banu Saqif the other right away the punishment that they got was that the Kuffar got a defeat and they had to uh, run away from the battlefield now, as they were running away towards Taif, they kept on trying to regroup and re-attack Muslims, but every time they were defeated. And they attacked Muslims and then were defeated and pushed back. Then attacked Muslims and defeated and pushed back all the way to Taif. And all of them took refuge in the castle of Taif. And the Prophet ﷺ, so the wealth that they had brought, all of that became, came under the ownership of Muslims. And it has been mentioned in different books, different quantities, but the account that is mentioned here in the tafsir of Mufti Shafi Sahib is that 4,000 uqiyah of gold which roughly comes to half a million 
uh, grams of sorry not gold silver and 24,000 camels and 6,000 people were made captives and 40,000 goats were uh, you know they came under the ownership of Muslims so with all that wealth and 6,000 captives Muslims kept on following uh, not with all, all of this but Muslims kept on following them all the way up to Taif and when they took refuge in the castle of Taif Muslims surrounded it seized it but they kept on throwing arrows so some Sahaba asked the Prophet ﷺ that make dua for them that these people are fighting the Nabi and they have been trying to regroup and fight the Nabi and now they have taken refuge in this castle and uh, throwing arrows at us the Prophet ﷺ, by the command of Allah SWT, did not make any dua for them Actually, the Prophet ﷺ made counsel with the Sahaba and left them there. Their power had been broken and the Prophet ﷺ then decided to go back to Jarana, put on the ihram and do umrah. But when they, on their way, these people, so this was the, this is the, this is the punishment that Allah is mentioning. But then there is a punishment in the hereafter or what is the, what is going to happen to them in the hereafter. So, the point here is that Muslims will fight the people who are negating Islam or trying to belittle Islam or humiliate Islam or come to war with the Prophet ﷺ or the uh, Islamic government but the purpose is to bring them to Hidayah not to gain worldly strength so these people when they ran away and stopped fighting the Prophet ﷺ also turned away but for the hereafter it was in the knowledge of Allah ﷻ that most of them were actually going to accept Islam so except for those leaders, roughly 70 leaders of their, these people, Hawazin were killed but ثُمَّ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the forgiveness, the, the repentance of many of these, of whoever Allah wished whoever Allah, uh, you know, willed وَاللَّهُ وَفُرْ رَحِيمٌ and the, the, this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah is most forgiving and uh, very merciful so this happened that these people came back as the Prophet ﷺ turned back these people left their castle and came to the Prophet ﷺ. their leaders came to the Prophet ﷺ and said that we have accepted Islam and we request you that um, there was a poet among them they, they said that we are basically because the Prophet ﷺ, one of these leaders was a foster uncle of the Prophet ﷺ because of uh, you know uh, the Prophet ﷺ, his uh, mother who took care of him when he was little, his feeding this person but through that relationship was the foster uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. so he referred to this relationship that he has with the Prophet ﷺ and asked him to show mercy similarly there was a poet among them who said that if we took this request of mercy to the kings of the world the kings of Rome and stuff they would have shown mercy to us and you are much better and higher in akhlaq fazla and in good akhlaq uh, than those people so now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a very merciful person and he at his heart wanted to return their captives they, and their, uh, they had requested to return the captives, the 6,000 people that you have taken captives and all the wealth that you have taken. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them that I have to do the just thing. These people, these mu'mineen, you see there's a huge army with me who have fought and the spoils of war are the right of the people who fight. So it is their right. So I give you an option to either take back those spoils of war and I'll convince my people or take back your captives, one of the, the two. So they chose to take back those, uh, those non-believers that they had been taken captive, those 6,000 people. The Prophet ﷺ then came to the Sahaba and addressed them in a gathering and said that this is their request. They have become Muslims and show mercy to your Muslim brothers. And if you are, if you agree, if you will, if you are also willing, then we'll let those captives go. And if someone of you is not willing, then we will compensate from some other wealth for those people who are not willing to let these captives go. So there was a general. Uh, you know consensus Muslims the group of Muslims the gathering the army there was a general voices among them that we agree to this and that we are happy to return their captives but the Prophet ﷺ said that I don't know who among you specifically agrees and who disagrees so therefore he among those groups that were 
making up this army he asked every single leader of that group to go to a people or the people to come to their leader and tell what is in their heart confide it to those leaders so if somebody is being pressurized by the general environment of forgiving they should not be for, uh, pressurized if they want to keep their captive or they, if they if they don't agree to this proposition then they should tell the leader and the, the leader should come and tell me and this is how it happened the point why we, we are mentioning it is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not take the general opinion the general voice of the crowd but he made sure that the, every single person who has a right their right is fulfilled and this is what we should do general consensus or general you know you know voice of the crowd is not a dalil is not an is not something that we can base our base our decisions on if it is if it pertains to the rights of individuals every single individual has to be asked free of pressure so this is what we should keep in mind in matters of inheritance and those kind of decisions when you are making that every single individual's right should be upheld and they should be given a free will to what they want to do anyway everybody agreed and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned those captives so this is the understanding that even though they were fighting and they were fighting the nabi of allah, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they kept on regrouping and throwing arrows shooting arrows at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's army still allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their tawbah when they repented and accepted faith allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted them into the fold of islam and they became brothers of muslims so these are the lessons that we learn from these ayat that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he accepts and we are not allowed to uh, consider anybody lowly inferior or uh, you know hopeless that there is no hope that will bring faith when the matter comes to fight when they are actively attacking yes we have to push them back but the thing that we despise is the kufr and the disbelief not the disbeliever or the kafir himself allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can turn their hearts whenever they want our job is to work our best to bring the people to faith may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us amen ya rabbal alamin rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka antat tawwabur rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqihi sayyidina wa ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amin ya rabbal alamin